Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Papa Varian and this is Crusader Kings 2 and today we are going to have a guide, a speedrun guide for the Monarch's Journey of Duke's Cooling, the latest Monarch's Journey that is essentially set in Bosnia and has you rise up as the Bosnians so that you can create your own kingdom and then, you know, spend some time at peace. Uh, this is one of the easiest Monarch's Journeys in my personal opinion, but I saw a lot of people, you know, point out, hey, I never played in the region, I'm not used to the Byzantines, what do I do? So, the three goals that we need to do is we need to become the king of Bosnia, we need some heretical courtiers and we need to be at peace for quite some time, all in all, uh, for 12 years I think and we need I think I believe uh, 12 heretical courtiers maybe 16 it doesn't really matter it's very very simple to do and we will do it in a fairly quick fashion I think in 19 years I believe you can do it quicker if the Pope gives you a crusade quicker but don't worry about it you start as a Catholic ruler in Bosnia now your land is mostly Catholic uh, Bogomilist and Orthodox the Bogomilist parts of your lands are very important so that you can convert to that heresy this was of course also uh, historically true although uh, the dynasty of Kulinic never actually converted to Bogomilism but the lands were indeed Bogomilist so I picked some random focuses here I picked war primarily because I was thinking this gives me more levies that we can use for the crusade that is 100% coming uh, without a doubt the crusade is coming you can also go for theology I don't think there's that big of a difference in there in fact I would argue there's barely any difference in there you can see that I handed out uh, three of my titles to start with uh, I believe six and then I pushed the centralization uh, law one up so that we can have three out of three instead of just two you know lands that we can hold and uh, from here and out we are fast forwarding of course you know a lot of things are happening I'm not really doing much I'm just waiting for the Pope to announce that there is a crusade the, because the crusade this late into the game is an absolute gold bag not just literally which it is uh, indeed because you get a lot of money for participating but also you can hire mercenaries with that crusade money that are so so large that you can trump the Byzantine Empire with no issues whatsoever. As you can see, the faithful prepare, uh, prepare for war most of the time. It is Egypt. This is only rarely something else. Uh, if you are in the very unlucky situation to get the Fourth Crusade, I mean, you know, most of the time people want it, but in this case, you should probably just reload and, you know, start anew. And uh, you can see right here that I now have the piety. You need 250 to convert to Bogomilism. You can convert to any regional province or rather to any local province that you control directly. So make sure that uh, in your personal domain, there is at least one Bogomilist province. And from there on out, we essentially just wait. Uh, the Jihad in my playthrough was successful against Jerusalem. That is a new thing that very rarely happens, but it doesn't really matter to us in any way whatsoever. All you need is roughly at 250 days. I did it at 200 days because I was lucky. My ruler was also an organizer. I got a very easy and very early organizer experience in there, but you want to start at roughly 250 days until the crusade starts when you gather your armies and already march them down there because you want to be in Egypt at a fairly early date. The earlier you are, the easier you can amass the points that you need. Now, the points are usually used to, you know, get more land once the crusade is actually over, but we don't want any of the land. We don't want Egypt itself because if you become a king, you can no longer create the kingdom of Bosnia. So, this is very much not in our interest. You can see I'm down here already fairly early. I have all of these events, they literally mean nothing. If you are not already a secret Bogomilist, I want to point out, don't take any of the crusade mechanics, any of the crusade events that could theoretically give you, you know, um, becoming zealous, for example, because then you won't be able to pick up the heresy and you need the heresy to actually finish this as soon as possible. Now, as you can see, you just want to play fairly passively. I lost some battles here, but every battle participation and every person that on the enemy side dies to your soldiers gives you some score. And again, you don't need to be leading in score. You don't even want to be that much high, uh, that, that high up. You just want a lot of the money out of this. And roughly when you have 8% in, you know, crusade contribution, you can check it by hovering over the flag on the left. Then you will get a, a, enough money pretty much to make things happen. Now, as you can see here, the crusade ends successfully and we end up with 4k cash. We have 3.5 prestige or 3.5k prestige and 2k piety. Now the first thing that you want to do right away is just dissolve your troops. They're not going to be that many troops anyway. It really doesn't matter to win the wars here that are to come. And the first thing that I did was I just came out as a Bogomilist because, you know, it doesn't really hurt. It doesn't really matter. At this point, if you are not already a secret Bogomilist, just pick it up because now you definitely have enough piety to do it from your province. And then go ahead and invite as many holy men with the piety that you have in excess. Invite them to your court because every single holy man counts towards the, you know, invite heretics to your court. Heretical company right away. We brushed through a we breezed through it, got gold, and that is a very easy su uh, success right there. Already we got, uh, I think, six points, right? Yeah, six points, and this challenge is gone. Now, the next thing that you want to do is just immediately declare war against the Byzantine Empire. I was looking at the factions here. I was thinking, should I found a faction? And then I said to myself, you know what? Don't found a faction. Let's just immediately declare a war. You will always be able to beat the Byzantine Empire by hiring mercenaries. You can see it right here. I uh, went immediately, you know, of course, I raised my troops, but then I went on and hired mercenaries. We're about 20k people in total. 
The Byzantine Empire can come close to your numbers, and you can see that I assaulted everything down. That is exactly what you want to do. S assault everything down, drive up that war score, and then you will only need one battle to actually win it. And you can see I caught them off guard here, I started a small battle, then they had a river crossing, and we actually won the battle, and with that the war ends, and we are all of a sudden independent. Now, I know that a lot of people say, hey, wait a minute, but for the decision to found the, uh, the Bosnian Kingdom, you actually need the Duchy of Whom, which is, you know, those coastal regions over there it, at the Adriatic Sea. That is not a problem. You can gain those as a heretic immediately from the Byzantine Empire by truce breaking and just declaring a holy war for whom. I would suggest that you do this because you have a lot of money, you have a lot of time, you can just go ahead and actually get it done. And once you are getting it done, of course, that is really what you want to go for because this is the end of this very campaign. They marched into me here in this battle, as you can see. And um, the Byzantines are very aggressive. If you split your armies, then you can recombine your armies and you will defeat them. And the war will be over before they even know. You can see it right here. I mean, what? Maybe one year passed and we are now in full control of Bosnia and as such, or well, you know, of the kingdom of Bosnia that we are founding it, and as such we can immediately create it. It is important to note that if you are able to create the kingdom of Bosnia, once you took those two provinces, you will also be in control of the de jure borders of Bosnia in full, meaning that you don't need to do anything more for not so landlocked. Yet another of the achievements that we are indeed hunting for here. Now once you're independent, just make sure I kept a guard around of like maybe 3k mercenaries. Uh, just keep someone around so that nobody around you attacks you and then it's time to wait. Because you need 12 years as one ruler of successive peace or, yeah, you know, successful peace without any interruption. Uh, as you can see, I mean, that's just a lot of waiting. I don't think I need to show you, you know, how we are waiting here. Although, of course, you know, at the end of the day, you just pick up another level. So bronze, then silver, and then gold every four years. But you just need to sit around, make sure that nobody attacks you, make sure that nobody rebels. I send, you know, for example, I did the prosperity uh, realm at peace thing, which brings down revolution uh, revolutionaries. I made the my uh, chancellor improved relationships with the Byzantines so that they would not attack us. I also went ahead, the steward improved our domain because the more prospering a domain uh, county is, the better you will fare, you know, because every prospering uh, or rather every prosperity level makes it so that you gain a minus one in terms of, uh, you know, people wanting to be revolu uh, revolutionaries. So, and that is really all that you need to do from here on out. It's just a waiting game. The earlier you're done with the crusade, the earlier you're done with the wars against the Byzantine Empire, the earlier you will be done with, the mo uh, with this monarch's journey. And the earlier, you can say, hey, I got all of the hairstyles in CK3. And as you can see, it took us just 19 years to get gold in all of the different challenges for this monarch's journey. It's a very easy one. I hope that you can do it at home and get all of the hairstyles that are, you know, possible in CK3. I want to thank the members of the channel that are, of course, making videos such as this one possible. Namely, the Barons, Aaron, Stefan, the Richest, T, Snywolf, Elmer, Mello, Thomas, Lachlan, and Mitchell. Then, of course, also the Counts, Shifty, Wombat, Kazen, and last but not least, the absolutely beautiful Duke, Suspicious Duck, Nathan, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Lexo, Eric, and Aiden. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel, and I will see you probably uh, next monarch's journey, eh? I, I got some other still to play and we're gonna do this on this channel I think until then later alligator